Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and um, once again it is 5 words into a thousand words. I have nothing else to say so let's go right into it shall we. So we are going to go check the website right now. Okay, so we are here in the website and I'm going to press the number 5 right now. So the 5 words we have are carpenter, crisis, pillow. Why pillow again? Oh my gosh. Okay, flash. <laughs> and uh, my... Okay, so... Uh, let's... Let's return back, shall we? Okay, so we are back here in the drawing and um, basically the five words are once again a carpenter, crisis, pillow, flesh and termite. Okay, so um, this puts me into a crisis. <laughs> uh, oh wait, the carpenter is having a crisis because there's some termite that are eating his furniture. And and he read somewhere that these termites also eat flesh. So he's too scared to do anything about them. And he's using a pillow to defend himself, apparently. So I think that sounds somewhat appropriate. Okay, since we have pillow here again, it just might makes remind me of a bed. So like maybe he was uh, his bed is the one that thing that's being eaten by termites and oh, not on the bed like the surrounding furniture and he's scared on the bed with a pillow in front of him wondering what will happen to him <laughs> he's in a crisis yeah it sounds like a story to me so let me draw it out uh okay let me take out my ruler Okay, so this is a carpenter, his furniture is like wooden stuff, you know. Oh my, the ruler has got pencil stuff on it, like graphite on it. Uh, never mind. Uh, I already marked the boundaries once again and let me just draw something. Last time I drew a bed that was, that was like sideways toward the wall here. This time I'm gonna try to draw it a bit more diagonally, even though I think I'll just mess it up and make it look terrible, but you know. Or maybe, but I can't really draw it in the center because if I draw by him. I can still try, let's try the center. Okay, so first I need a floor, so. I need like this, the base, the starting of the floor. So here we go. So this is where we are starting our view from. And here we have his, his uh, simple wooden bed in his workspace because he's a carpenter who works hard. So these are the, is like the height of the legs. This one isn't very fancy, it's just enough for practical use. It's not very, not very articulate or anything. This first thing that he made, first few things that he made. And it still works, so good for him. Okay, so he has a little bed on it. And... A carpenter, well he's, he's on a bed so he wouldn't be wearing his hat or anything.
you mean like visib visibly short? I'll draw his hair later. Okay, so. And in front of him is a pillow, so I'll just have to draw that first. And he's clutching on the pillow. Oh man. Once again, we we go into the random well uh, the dilemma of the hand the hand being too big. Okay, so he's like kind of kneeling down here. Although his legs look a little bit too short, um, we'll try to fix that. Because when you sit on a bed or do anything, it will compress a little bit. So, so you'll accommodate for his legs a bit. Okay, and then his blanket is here. Just blanket. Okay, so, um, so around him there's gonna be termites eating away at the floor or the other things in the room. So let's draw a chair here. Or drawing a chair facing front just looks weird. Anyways, so we have a chair, the little hole here, and the termites are gonna be here. So I'm not gonna draw the termites. I will use a color pencil to, you know, to draw dots which will represent the termites. And basically the only reason why he's scared of them is because he thinks they're flesh-eating termites. So maybe next to him we'll have like a magazine page that's like draping off the bed here. And there will be like, oh, flesh-eating termites. And then the other side will have the story. <laughs> so, so we have all the termites that will be here. So we have a chair. What else do we have? We have the floor. The floor will be like, well, we, we cannot really draw it completely straight in because you are looking at it from the front. So you will draw it like very slightly slanted lines. You'll draw it pretty light, lightly. Maybe not too lightly.
and then make it a little bit bigger as as it moves towards the front and here at the very front it will look pretty straight like I mean the middle the middle part will look straight then as it moves away it will look like it's Okay, so uh, should I continue drawing it here because I can't really put the ruler here. Oh man. But you get the point. So we have our wooden boards and you will just draw them, draw some lines to indicate they are like some, you know, about the same size boards but you get the point. Oh, so we have to figure out where the end of this thing is in the wall starts. So for that, we need to need to kind of extend this a little bit more. Oh man, I should have drawn it long to begin with. Okay, so, so you have the ending of the, the floor be around here. Yeah. Okay, so the ending of the floor should be around where his head is, or here. And then after that, we will have the wall. Okay, so after this what we'll do is we'll draw more furniture and we will then think about how the scenario will play out. Okay, so basically apart from the chair, what else will he be keeping in his personal space? Maybe a book stand for the magazines that he has. And nothing too much, like a small table maybe. So there will be like a table over here. Maybe over the, on this side there is like a little, little round table which he can, he can, he can actually do stuff on. Put his things on. I'll put his magazines on or something like that. 
table will be here. So it will be shaped like one of those stools, like a three-legged stool. Okay, so we have our table. Okay, and apart from the table, we will we have our little book stand of magazines. So we can have it crumbling down here because that's the first thing that the termites would have eaten. And so we need to show a crumb, crumble down bookshelf. So maybe the top board is the thing that's left here. And since like it, it will kind of look a bit like this because half almost a lot of it was eaten by the termites. And there'll be like spilled books, magazines over here. It's not that many because this is not its home, but there's still enough for it to be a bit of a mess. And apart from the magazines, the chair table, another thing that they're attacking is the floor itself. And that's why he's that's what makes it even more scary because never mind whether they're flesh eating termites, they're definitely going to Oh wait, flesh means I can't really draw flesh here, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna use flesh eating termites to use that word. <laughs> I'm not going to um actually draw flesh. Unless you consider a I mean it technically never mind, you you get the point. It's weird. I don't want to draw that. So there's like a little hole that they've made already. So this is a hole that they've been making. So, yeah. Looks like a weird... Looks like that thing that you stick on your gift. Like that kind of a shape. The ribbon thing with the two things sticking out. Okay, so behind is his wall, the back wall, and I'll tell you what's the continuation to this story after, as we are doing this, because even if I want to show you it, it wouldn't really make sense. And I mean, he's in his workspace now. It's hard for him to suddenly get help. His phone is here though, so he can call for help. Okay, so, yeah. So now let us move on to colouring. And I also need to figure out how I'm going to include all the termites. Okay, so first we'll colour the floor because we need to add the termites on, right? And the termites will be a very dark colour, so the floor has to be a light, like a beige-ish. I mean that kind of light colour, in a sense. So when we remove all the light colours, we have that colour that we use for colouring skin, so let's not use that. Um, we have ivory, which is very light. And it kind of looks like ivory, that, that kind of material. Yellow ochre. Yellow ochre and ivory could work together, so let me just quickly color this. So, you know in wood, there's, there's many different kinds of trees and things like that. 
and you know each tree has a different color to its wood a different property like some are more flexible some are more strong some are more stiff and brittle you hey, know brittle never mind i don't know some, some are easier to break like cut and some are not some are very moist some are not so much and I mean if you watch one of those how to videos you can you know how these how certain wooden products are made and um, yeah if not I can tell you about it I guess so apparently for many of the wooden products um, well, the it's based they basically then have to dry the tree up like they they keep all the tree trunks and they dry it up they heat it up with something like just nowadays they have like special compounds to actually keep the thing strong and also mold free you know make it resistant to mold I don't know about termites but mold sure so um Oh yeah, termite also reminds me of that reaction that they have in the what is it? Uh, the, the the iron and the yeah the sodium thing. And then it makes a fire or something. <laughs> it's interesting, so you you know just go and look it up yourself. I think for the furniture, we'll color them a different color because if we color everything the same color, it'll look very boring <laughs> and also a bit hard to decipher which is which. So the floor will be this color because I want it to be easy to see the termites, you know, in the lighter colored floor. And I think it makes sense to have a light color for the floor because it, it's easier to contrast that lighter color with some darker furniture in the sense to get a darker wood which will not look super dark because I mean unless you paint it you won't get a really dark color out of the wood so if you want to just use the wood itself and the only thing you do is do a top varnish or something then you would want to have then you want to make sure to have your floor as a light color and have the, the top as a darker color okay so let me just sharpen my yellow ochre Okay, actually if, here's a tip, if your gold color pencil is really shitty and doesn't shine, but your gold color pencil just, it just looks terrible, then use yellow ochre. <laughs> yeah. So, here we go. Of course, yellow ochre isn't gold, but it it sometimes looks it doesn't it won't look shiny. Uh, it you can tell it doesn't look shiny, but it does have that uh, characteristic yellowish color, like that characteristic goldish color to it. But if you look at it the other way around, it can look like um baby poop. So I don't know. It depends on the person. <laughs> this color can mean many different things to different people. And it's your own personal way of looking at it, I guess. But if you use the color correctly, it would look like gold, I guess. I think. Like a very matte version of gold. But in this case, you're gonna use it to give a bit more character to this very light colored thing. Make it look a little bit more like wood. And hopefully not make it look like someone, a kid pooped all over the floor or something. <laughs> because I, I just told you that some people may think this is the color that you can get from there. Uh, yeah.
Okay, so um, okay, so we have our floor here, and to give it a little bit more depth, we can add some dark spots, but um. We are not going to use Van Dyke Brown because we are going to use that for the termites. Wait, termites are not that dark, right? Are they? Wait a minute. See, when I search termite, one of the thing, the very first thing it shows is the reaction. Uh, never mind. Oh, ah, the difference between termite the insect and termite the reaction is the, is the hedge. How brilliant. <laughs> I didn't know. Okay, so termites are actually really light in color. How stupid of me. But then if I color a dark floor, it's very hard to see. Oh, there's some darker ones. Okay, can. Oh, there's some really dark ones. Then I think I can do that. Sure. Okay, it looks kind of gross. I don't want to look at it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'm still going to add some dark spots. Maybe for the dark spots, I'll actually use the, the dark, dark color. And for the termites, I'll use a different brown. Where is my Van Dyke? I found the Van Dyke Brown. So yeah, I'm gonna just use this to give a little bit more ancientness of like some kind of spots here and there for my for the wood. Give it a bit more of a natural appearance. Doesn't look very natural. It just looks like me drawing some line. Oh well. Mission field. <laughs> uh, never mind. But anyways, um, yeah. So this is the floor. So for the termite later on, we will use a different brown so that you can distinguish it from random dark spots. line like squiggly lines are better but they, they look like worms now. <laughs> Never mind. And like not too very subtle unpigmented lines. Anyways um so after this we will we will color the the furniture. Okay, so you'll we'll color the furniture and oh, should we color the termites first or what? Uh, okay, I'll color the furniture because I think we need to, you know, at least get a sense of what color they are. And the furniture can be other colors, they don't have to be brown because you can paint them much more easily than you can paint the floor. Um, you require less paint. So let's see, what, what would his taste be? I think his bed would be a normal woodish color because 
It'll just be a varnished kind of wood. So let me test out some brown and see which one looks good. I think this normal brown, I don't know, like a greyish brown kind of colour, I think. I don't know. Anyway, she decided to have a nice normal brown coloured bed, I guess. Yeah, so he has a bed. It is brown. And then his table will be like a, I don't know, a dark blue. Oh, they have the charcoal grey. I think his chair or his table should be, I think the table should be charcoal grey. I feel like that's a nice colour for that. Okay, so we have the table down, and then the next thing we can color is his bed. Um, I think his bed will just be like white, because why not? But not white as in white, white, but more like um, a light. Let's just use this cream yellow. Like, it'll just legit color the bed a cream yellow. And hope it doesn't look like ivory. <laughs> Can't tell much from here. It's just so light. Okay. And to get a bit of shadow, you use a, a different yellow. Should you use lemon or? Let's use the lemon first, and then if it's not dark enough, we can use. Okay, I can. This, I think it should work. Because he's depressing the bed and then this thing is also casting a bit of shadow on the bed. Okay. This thing as well. Okay, so we have that now. And then the chair can be the Prussian blue that we all love. Or not, I don't know. I'm not gonna be worried about people not liking it, so who cares? Uh huh. Yes, Prussian blue. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I forgot there's a hole here. I should have colored the floor color in the hole. Oh my. The blue escape. Or should I just color the entire thing blue? Yeah, I'm, I just cover up the hole. <laughs> it's easier that way. Okay, so we have the chair done. Um, for the white and black, I'll do it once we color everything before we put it in the turbine. 
and that's just the only thing that makes sense. But because of course there needs to be a bit of a lighter version of the black and a darker version so I need to be a bit more This part will be obviously dark because it's the inside. And in the meantime, I can just get in some white and then maybe I can use the charcoal grey, that should work. Okay, yeah. that works. Okay, so we have our chair. Okay, so after this we will color the rest of the things and then do the termites. Yeah, in the, the termites. Okay, so okay, so for the magazines, we will color them a variety of colors because I don't care, honestly. So I think this one will look cool and more. This page. Since you already know what's written there, I don't need to rewrite it, right? It's, it's kind of hard to write. Like the sideways scan of a thing. Uh, and then for the blanket, you would have it another traditional-ish looking color. Maybe it, I feel like it should just be like some kind of red color, like this carmine, carmine. I think that will just go. It'll go well with that. And if you get some magenta or something. Oh, okay. you can just use some umber red to give a bit more depth to this. Make it a bit more, less real <laughs> color. And for the rest of the magazines, I'll just color them a variety of colors, of course. It can be magazines or books or whatever. Who cares? What? Okay, this blue, I guess.
Okay, so yeah, we have the magazine bunch. Uh, I think there's more. <laughs> the more magazine. Okay, so now that we color all the magazines, uh, we just need to color the person and his phone. This phone is gonna be a black phone, so doesn't really matter. Since the phone basically just looks black except for its button. Anyways, uh, that's his phone. <laughs> and then the guy will be wearing some generic workers, worker stuff, I guess. Like those khaki kind of color or... I think khaki will look nice. This color is pants and khaki color. But he won't be wearing his any boots or anything because he's sleep he was sleeping on his bed or something. So yeah, that that will be different, I guess. And we'll color this. Oh no, no, let's not use the pink orange. The pink, the pale orange is a little bit too. Uh, a little bit too close to the skin color. I think a like a blue or a green color will go nice. Let's let's go with peacock blue. Peacock blue. Yeah, this this kind of a color will go nice with it. So now we return to our skin color and we have his legs, his hand, his face. I feel like we should just make him let him be bald because who cares? Okay, okay. So now let me add some highlights, you know the important places although I'm pretty sure you can't see much because it's late and it's gonna become dark in another hour and a half oh well great mm. bed cause he has to match I guess of course the quilt will never match the pillow will match Okay, so after we're done with that, we will add some more darkness and lightness and whateverness you want to do. And you will Okay, and yes, now is the ultimate oh in the wall, the back wall. Uh uh, for the back wall, let's design that later, or should we not? Okay, let's, let's do the back wall first. I feel like I, w I just want to use one of these orange color things. So I'm going to use this orange yellow. Sorry, I can't help but use orange. To, to a large extent. <laughs>
Wait, you know what you can do? Let's draw a horse here. Let's see how much time we have. It's about 46 minutes. Let's draw a horse here. Like just a silhouette kind of a thing. I don't know what, I don't know how to draw these silhouette things, but who cares? Sorry. Ah. Yeah, so I'll colour the silhouette later, but first let me colour the rest of the wall. Okay, so I think you will wait, oh yeah, we haven't drawn the termites yet, so I'll tell you that when we draw the termites. But anyways, uh, as you can tell, you're, you're colouring the wall and uh, so I'll tell you the, the main, the beginning part of the story, which if you haven't heard it already. Basically, the, the thing is, this guy is a carpenter, and he builds many wooden things, and um, and his, he, has, he has a workspace where he has a bed, so if he's working overnight on a project, he can go and sleep, and then he can come back to work on the project, or to check on it, or something like that. And, uh, and one day... And basically one day, right, wait, I think for the orange, we should use ultramarine. Where's ultramarine? Okay, so, yeah, so basically one day he, he, had, he was doing one of his overnight projects. And he decided to go and sleep for some time, take a nap. And he was also reading this magazine before he was about to take his nap. So this magazine is about some some weird things. It's like those tabloids and they just say random stuff. Um, and then it talks about flesh-eating termites. And he was like, oh wow, I didn't know there were such things or something like that. He'd be like surprised by that. And then all of a sudden, a whole horde of termites burst into the room. And he's like, wait, are they the flesh eating termites? Oh my gosh. That kind of a thing. Like very, very surprised and shocked. Unfortunately, I do not know how to show shock. I'm sorry. The tail doesn't look like a tail. Just looks like some weird thing. Looks like an extra leg. <laughs> okay, it kind of looks like a paintbrush thing now. That that works, I guess. Okay, so so now we we come to the final scene, the most important part of the scene: the termites. The termites indeed shall come. 
And of course, today we all learned that the difference between termite the insect and termite the reaction thing that gives you that reaction is the letter H. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, for the termites, I think I'm thinking of using a reddish brown. So I'm gonna draw them in like like two little dot thingies, like ants or something, like that. It'll be an uh, absolute annoyance of a lot of work. Uh, actually, you know, it's easier to just draw them as one dot, one long dot. Okay, so now I shall be, I'll be telling you what is the great reveal of well, the, the rest of the story, how the story ends. So, obviously he, he is very scared and he's like, he decides to call someone and he calls his wife. So, and then his wife is like, uh... Flesh eating termites are, are so rare. They don't arrive, they don't appear in such places. I mean, when she was listening to what he's talking about, she, she knew it from the start, like it is normal termites. But she was so concerned about his well being because, well, he is in a place that is built with wood. She, it, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't end well if the termites were eating through his house. So. As I said, we wanted him to be encircled by termites, so here we go. And yeah, I don't want to draw too many termites because then it does look like a termite heat. It won't look like you can't really see the individual termites so clearly, especially when they're so small in the drawing. So I'm just gonna draw a few more random ones, just you know, all over the place. And we know that they'll be concentrated in certain places and not all over the room, so yeah. So this guy is surrounded by termites and then he calls his wife and his wife comes to you know save him obviously because I she's skeptical about the fact the thing about termites eating people or eating flesh. Uh oh wow it's been really dark. Let me increase the exposure. Maybe that will work. No? Exposure. Hmm. Okay, wait, let me Open the curtains a bit.
Yes, you can appreciate this in full light. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm not going to adjust the light for the rest of the video because I can. So, sorry. But anyway, it's just so as his wife comes to save him from the termites and she brings with her some termite repellent or something and all the termites go away or go through that hole. And then his wife brings him out and then she tells him, Dude, these termites do not eat flesh. They're just normal termites and all they eat is wood. Actually, do flesh-eating termites exist? Maybe, I don't know. Anyways, uh, with that, um, you can check that yourself, I guess. But anyway, that's not important. The important thing is, if you enjoyed this video, please press the like button and subscribe. And um, with that, you can admire this for a few more seconds with the enhanced light. I would like to say thank you. And bye!